All right. So I've already explained a bit about this. This is the same DVD with the Fred Ladd interview, which everyone has seen. Because whoever whoever ripped this DVD for the Fred Patton thing uploaded this, but not, or sorry, the Fred Ladd thing uploaded this, but not Fred Patton. So we're about to find out. We're about to find out what's here. It might actually be uneventful. It might actually not be anything. But let's find out. So he uh, apparently made a business deal with uh, somebody uh, uh, to do a new dubbing and a new... Uh, edit, uh, which would be called Kimba the Lion Prince. And uh, this was recorded in Canada. And uh, this was just at the time that Disney's Lion King had come out in 1994. So in the new English language scripts that they adapted from the Japanese animation, the scripts of course had to match the original animation. That was fixed. But they could change the dialogue a bit. So they made it a bit more like the original, uh, or I mean, a bit more like Disney's Lion King. Like, oh, oh man, yeah. I wish I, I wish I had this before I made the review. That's pretty juicy. Uh, apparently, made a business. Then uh, Lion King had been like uh, 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 Kimba in the first place. Uh, in in both series, the young lion is fighting a villainous older lion with a scar on his face, but in the original. Japanese version, there was uh, never any hint that there was a relationship between the two. Uh, the lion they called Boss Claw was just a big uh, bully, a gangster who'd sort of moved in in the power vacuum between the time Kimba's father was killed and Kimba returned to the jungle. So Kimba had to beat him. But uh, in the uh, uh, Kimba the Lion Prince version they did, they called him uh, uh, Kimba's uncle, uh, which was a lot more like uh, the Lion King, where uh, Scar was the uncle of Simba. And this made it look, uh, uh, to fans who didn't know the full story, as additional proof that the Lion King was simply a uh, uh, imitation of uh, the 1960s uh, Kimba TV series, which was not true. And it's so weird coming from him. When he, like, created that entire publication. <laughs> so it's like he, it's like he's distanced himself now. It's like, it's like when this, this Rhino DVD came out, he's just like, yeah, no, that's not true. That's fascinating. That he, like, he apparently changed his mind. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's that's certainly not the impression that I, I got reading your book. Oh my God, Fred! But it's a good thing, right? No, it's it's a. I'm not saying it's not a good thing. He changed his mind. Like that's pretty cool. However, it's fucking disgusting that whoever decided that on this on this DVD, this. Fred Ladd interview that everybody's seen everywhere because it's been uploaded and used as evidence and republished and all this shit where he's saying like Polly and Zazu are the same character they serve the same function right that's been shown everywhere somebody saw this DVD and ripped it and decided to publish that but not this but not this they published the Fred Ladd interview but not the Fred Patton interview. I wonder why. I wonder why they did that. Hmm, suspicious. The controversy between um, uh, the Lion King and, and Kimba the White Lion came when the, uh, the, the Lion King movie came out. And uh, a number of fans noticed some points of similarity between that and the Kim of the White Lion TV series, um, such as the fact that uh, uh, Simba and Kimba were both the uh, sort of crown prince of the, of the, of the jungle, so to speak. Uh, they both had uh, elderly baboons as 
prime minister is called them, and a, uh, a sort of hot-tempered uh, squawky bird as its comic relief. Uh. Zazu is not hot-tempered. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Fred. <laughs> Zazu is not hot-tempered. And uh, laughing hyenas as comic relief villains, and a more serious uh, scar-faced lion as the main villain, and so on. Um, so uh, the fans wondered how much connection there was between Kimba and The Lion King. Well, Disney said officially that nobody who worked on The Lion King had ever heard of Kimba the White Lion or Tesca. Uh, this was so ridiculous that most of the fans didn't believe it. Now, a lot of the fa American fans had not seen Kimba themselves, or if they had, it was only when they were young children, because it hadn't been on American television since the late 1970s. So uh, they were not that familiar with the details themselves, and some of them uh, exaggerated the similarities between Kimba and uh, Disney's movie, such as... He... Uh... It's like he, you, you gotta take ownership over it, Fred. What do you mean, some of them? So, like, okay, let's go back to... Uh, I just want to point this out. So, oh my god, where is that? Let me see if I can find this one thing. Hold on, we're going on a detour. There he Maybe. is! So, listen, listen, to, listen, listen to him say this first. And when uh, the, uh, uh, the fans, the comic book fans, the anime fans got looking at this, they recognized that, that uh, there was a story sequence out of order. So the fans themselves uh, uh, sort of matched up all the stories and figured out how they ought to go. And then uh, uh, when uh, Tesca uh, visited America at the end of the 1970s, Seventies and a lot of to meet a lot of his fans here. He said, you know, he was very amazed and impressed that they had liked the series enough that that they had gone to the work to do this. And uh, yeah, we we'd get more or less gotten it right. So, beginning of this clip, he says the fans, the fans of Kimba had reconstructed the chronological order of the episodes to more appropriately match what they were originally intended to be. Because of some dispute with NBC, they were shown like out of order to some extent. And then Tezuka visits America, and the fans show Tezuka the, the, the version in order, and Tezuka says, you, more, you, you, you got it. And then Fred Patton then says, we more or less got it right. Very heavily, like, my assumption there is now, okay, Fred Patton was a part of the group of fans that reconstructed the order. So he's saying, the fans of Kimba, and then at the end he says, we more or less got it right. That is, that is, a, that is a claim of ownership that he wants because he's proud of that, right? It's enough that, that they had gone to the work to do this. And uh, yeah, we, we'd get more or less gotten it right. We more or less gotten it right. Now, now we go to Fred Patton talking about the Lion King controversy. And he also says, the fans. <laughs> but, then, but then he absolves himself of ownership of, of, of the, the, the controversy, even though it's like thoroughly documented that he... He, he he was like one of the biggest reasons why it continued on to this day. So let's hear him talk about that. So uh, they were not that familiar with the details themselves, and some of them uh, exaggerated the similarities between Kimba and uh, Disney's movies. So some of them exaggerated the similarities between Kimba and The Lion King. Some of them. Not me, not Fred Patton. Come on, own it. In this, in this very interview, he should have been saying, I was one of them, but then later I thought about it more and realized it was kind of bullshit. Just, uh, just own it. Just own it. There's like, he's like fucking weaseling his way out of this. As whether, uh, Boss Claw was supposed to have been Kimba's uncle or not. Um, at the time, Disney uh, officially maintained that uh, you know none of its production people had ever heard of, of uh, Tesca or of Kimba, and I guess that's still the official story. Uh, now that's that was back in 1994 and 95, which is 
over five or six years ago. Today, if you ask a number of the animators who worked on it, they said, of course they'd heard of Tesla and Kimba. In fact, they felt almost professionally insulted that Disney management uh, insisted that they claim that they had never heard of it. But uh, uh, they do not feel that they had uh, plagiarized uh, Kimba, uh, uh, yeah, Kimba in, in, in any real sense, any more than Tesla had plagiarized uh, Kimba from Bambi. Tesca always admitted that it was Bambi that gave him the inspiration, but he had his own ideas as to how he thought the story should develop, and that was what he did. Uh, the uh, Disney animators, uh, uh, apparently they got the idea because Jeffrey Katzenberg said, hey, Bambi's real popular, why don't we do a sort of uh, new version of Bambi, only let's set it in Africa, you know, King, uh, King of the Jungle. Uh, I have no idea whether Jeffrey Katzenberg was familiar with uh, Kimba or not, but it's a, it was a fairly obvious idea for a Disney executive to come up with. And uh, having said, you know, let, let's do a remake of Bambi with uh, African animals, uh, he turned it over to the Disney story people. So I certainly don't think that uh, Disney management gave any orders to rip off Judge yeah, Emperor. And, uh, you know, if maybe... If you found this video before finishing the Kimba video, this would have made the video one hour longer. No, not at all. It would have made it, like, 30 seconds longer. He a was uh, yeah, uh, their way of doing a tribute great. back to... <laughs> I'm confused. H is allowed to associate with fans who said they got it right for the order. But separate fans not himself say it's exaggerated about the comparison. He does sound like he wants to be non-associated with the controversy in the interview. Yeah. So, what year was this DVD released? Hold on. 2003. Which is before Te b before Patton's book, but but the book is a collection of other publications that were previously released. So I don't know when the original. I could look. I could actually just find out right now, probably. Okay, so this was this was pub this was originally an unpublished paper from 1995. So even though even though his book that has this paper within it was what 2004 or something this original like this all of this shit about like the whole Kimba versus Simba shit that he originally wrote is from like 95. So like literally a year after The Lion King. And now cut to this in like 2003, and he's like, the Kimba crowd <laughs> exaggerated the similarities. <laughs> and uh, you know, if maybe a couple of the individual anim uh, animators sort of remembered a a couple of uh, uh, details about the original series. Um, uh, putting that stuff in was uh, uh, their way of doing a tribute back to Tezka, as Tezka had made uh, uh, the um, uh, Jungle Emperor a tribute to Mambi. And again, this is not uh, exactly um, a new thing for Disney. If you look at Beauty and the Beast, and if you compare it with the late 1940s live-action French version uh, by Jean Cocteau, there are a couple of uh, details that sort of make it obvious that the Disney animation crew was familiar with Cocteau's version. They were not ripping it off, but they were giving a tribute to a filmmaker who had done an earlier version. They were not ripping it off. My God, Fred, you said like the exact opposite shit. <laughs> the uh, official response of Tezuka Productions in Japan was that since Tezuka himself had originally uh, acknowledged that uh, Jungle Emperor was inspired by Disney's Mambi. Uh, they did not feel that they could morally object to Disney doing the Lion King uh, and maybe being inspired by uh, by Jungle Emperor. <laughs> oh, you listen, and all the Kimba crowds people were like, they wanted to sue. They wanted to sue, but they didn't have enough money because Disney's so evil and rich. And here Fred Patton is, is like, yeah, well, the official response from Tezuka Productions is like, yeah, 
Right. You know, some things are borrowed from other things. It wasn't a ripoff. Like, if anything, there were, like, slight similarities here and there. Uh, they made it pretty clear that they weren't happy with Disney's insistence that nobody at Disney Studio had ever heard of Tesca, as though he wasn't worth hearing about, even though he was called the Walt Disney of Japan, uh, and had, vi had visited the Disney Studio. Um, but uh, they did not intend to uh, uh, make any legal problems over it. With the possible exception, there, uh, it depends on, on how you interpret their press release, but they said something to the effect that uh, uh, they, re they, they sort of reserve the right, depending on further developments, to protect the names of Dr. Tesca and of uh, Kimba. And that was sort of assumed by a lot of fans, you know, since this is not saying nobody's sure, but uh, that if Disney ever tried to claim that Kimba was a ripoff of The Lion King, uh, you know, if there was ever any uh, dispute over, say, foreign rights, if, if Tesco Productions tried to sell foreign rights to Kimba and Disney tried to protest that this is obviously a ripoff of The Lion King, then Tesco Productions would stand up in that case. Uh, but that never happened. I think Kimba <laughs> is... My God. I think... So I'm going to... Uh, Salamancer, are you still here? Yes. I'll, I'll export this, this bit of him talking about The Lion King. We should just, like, upload that as its own thing. Because, like, people deserve to have that resource in the same way that people have the fucking Fred Ladd video. Uh, the right? Japanese way in. Damn, I wish, I wish that the DVD could have shown up before uh, my video was finished. Because I, I knew that this juicy shit would be on here. Um... I mean, like, the conspiracy theory is already, like, destroyed anyway, but, man, this would have been great to include. Let's see if I can find that website that was complaining about it. So, on this website, this website, which is, like, a hilarious fucking website, um, <laughs> and this, this website, uh, Kim, Kimba wlion.kimba.biz that this website that this person has been like maintaining and operating for a long time and this the same blue background as is found in the shitty youtube video that was used as a source for madavi sunder's ted talk <laughs> you can see that the youtube video just used screenshots from this website. It's the same blue background. So this website, and it also literally says on this website, so this is a, this even goes further to why Madhavi Sundar believed this. Um, it literally says on this website, a scene with Simba's father appearing in the moon. It literally says that on this website, and it shows this. It shows this is the screenshot. So I believe that this website Whoever operates this website, they got these screenshots for The Lion King. Like, this has to be an intentional exaggeration. This has to be intentional. And then whoever made the YouTube video believed this, and then, and then Madavi Sundar believed the YouTube video. <laughs> and there's this, like, gigantic waterfall of, like, misinformation of just, like, people trusting that other people are 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 like being accurate about something yeah it's just a chain of parroting right anyway this website the reason why i got that fred Patton interview the reason why i got that dvd is because of i believe this yeah so this this is them like complaining about the uh the fred Patton uh uh interview on this this dvd this is how i knew it was from the rhino set and that's why i got it in his commentary published with the rhino set of kimba dvds fred Patton goes to great lengths to downplay or even discredit the evidence concerning the origins of disney's lion king he repeatedly makes factual errors however so conclusions based on these errors don't hold water if i'm going to trust somebody about factual errors 
it's not going to be the person that said that that Mufasa showed up in a moon. Anyway, yeah. So I don't, I don't, I don't know like the full extent of like how accurate this is. But this is this is why I got the thing is because like this this person with the Kimba fan website was like super salty about Fred Patton's interview here, which is really funny. And I was just like, okay, I have to see this interview. And then it just like the only one I could find, the only copy of the DVD that I could find wouldn't show up for like months. So, um, and to suggest that fans of a show know nothing about what they're fans of sounds like ivory tower thinking. One would hope, punctuation. One would hope. A, oh, actually, never mind. One would hope a that a historian would not engage in. Plus, to hear Mr. Patton make this assertion after hearing Fred Ladd on the same disc tell how the similarities of the Kimba, uh, of the Disney movie to Kimba were blatantly clear to him, well, the befuddled fans idea is not a valid argument. If I'm gonna trust, if I'm gonna trust someone with the facts here, it's not gonna be this fucking website. It's n it's n it's not gonna be. <laughs> It's not going to be the Mufasa showed up in a moon <laughs> website, for sure. <laughs> that was funny. That was really, really funny. Just like he's just s attempting to distance himself from, like, the Kimba conspiracy people when he is, like, one of the major players. Ah. <laughs> uh. I guess he changed his mind since 1995. And yeah, I mean, like, to summarize, so somebody from the Kimba crowd watched this DVD and ripped the Fred Ladd interview for everyone to see. Somebody did that, and they must have seen this, and they did not do that. Hmm, suspicious. They just decided. They decided not... Not to share this with anybody. Really? <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching. Shout out to my $5 and up patrons Lemonade Warrior, Diet Jesus, Rift, Brennan Stuper, Malav Shah, Pit Wang, and Mechadong. I know I said no more Kimba, but, uh. Eh, shit happens.